morning. Um, oh, I'm Lily Singer. I'm vice president of the Hort Society and doing the plant forum tonight. We have a much longer than usual plant forum, so I'm going to go through these really quickly. Um, but yeah, as I said, in honor of our speaker, Paul Mills, and um, South America and Chile, we have some Chilean plants. So the first uh, was taken by Carol Bornstein down in um, Chile when it was in bloom in November. And um, I bet everybody recognizes Bougainvillea. Um, there are several countries in Eastern South, South America where it occurs. And this is really typical. I, um, when I went to Costa Rica, I saw them turned into little trees like this. Um, many, many different um, cultivars are available. And next slide, please, Alexis. So another plant that gardeners love here and that you can get wonderful cut ones at Trader Joe's is Alstromeria um, or Peruvian lily. There are many species of this um, herbaceous perennial which means that it dies back for part of the year. And uh, they occur in both winter wet and summer wet areas um, in South America. Uh, again, Carol took this in November in Chile um, in the wild. And uh, you can find many at your local nursery. Next, Alexis. Um, so moving away from Chile for a minute, um, this is from Laura Bauer. We have four different species of, uh, of ribes, which are all, um, uh, what do we got here? Well, I'm not gonna go into the details, but um, these are medium to large shrubs. They are um, uh, come into their best in late winter and spring um, when they leaf out and flower or vice versa. Um, they are mostly medium to large shrubs. Um, Laura's growing this in dry partial shade in Ventura and says midwinter is ribes time. So uh, these summer deciduous shrubs are looking a little rough by fall, but with the first rains, they explode with color. There is one exception in this quartet. Um, evergreen currant, ribes viburnifolium, is the only evergreen currant in California, and it is not summer deciduous. It's evergreen. Um, makes a wonderful shrub for uh, even deep shade and has tiny little red flowers, a great plant. Next, please. So um, going back to Chile, Laura has stuck this in. Um, we're gonna have a couple from the Ventura Botanic Gardens. Um, this is uh, Helio Heliotropium stenophyllum, also known as Palito Negro. I guess I think that means little, little black twigs. Um, and uh, I checked on this. Laura, do you, have you experienced it as being evergreen? I don't know much about this. Um, I, I, I just took the picture because I thought it looked really neat at the Ventura Botanic Gardens. They have a Chile section. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, I couldn't find that one piece out. I could um, uh, find that it's endemic to Chile. So um, it's the only place that it grows. And it came from somewhere. Um, it's in the records of the Botanic Garden. Um, but the availability, I couldn't find anybody carrying it right now. So you can go see it at the Botanic Garden. Yeah, um, it just looked cool. I don't really know that much about it. I think it yeah. is evergreen. It, it's at least well, um, by the coast, yeah. So anyway, very pretty. Um, next is another Chilean plant. And this one, um, I kind of, you know, kind of rankle, you know, and I read that it naturalizes pretty easily. So does... Uh, uh, Lobelia laxiflora can get out of control. So um, plant with care and with knowledge. Um, this is not like the little Lobelia cardinalis that you find, not cardinalis, the little, the little one that you find in, in the six packs of the nurseries. Um, this is a large shrub. And um, I did find that every part of this plant is poisonous. So don't put it where you have puppies and dogs that eat plants. Um, it is available. Um, from Annie's Annuals and Perennials by mail order. That was the only current source that I could find for it. Um, Sandy Masuo um, sent in a couple of things from her garden in Burbank. This is Aristolochia Californica, the California pipe vine, so-called because of the interesting pipe-shaped flowers. Um, it is a vine that prefers afternoon shade in most areas. Um, and uh, she's got it growing in a terracotta pot with random potting mix. Um, 
So, which interesting part, they, they uh, trap the gnats that pollinate them, but the cat captivity is not terminal because the plant does not want to kill the courier of its pollen. So it's getting its nutrients from somewhere else. Um, this, oh, um, this is, this is uh, it's not available at Nuccio's. That's a, a mistake on our stuff. So um, Nuccio's is where the camellia came from that's going to come up. So this is available at native plant nurseries. Um, so the next slide, oh, there we go. Plant sales, succulent nursery. Oh, this is a different slide. So this is a really lovely Echeveria. Um, look for it at plant sales, succulent nurseries. Um, really striking bright red and yellow flowers. And again, Sandy is growing this in um, terracotta pots in Burbank. Um, forms large rosettes, really nice, beautiful. Next, please. So this is a really cool one. This is a, um, from April Curtis's garden in Burbank. Um, this is um, Osimum labiatum, formerly Orthosiphon labiatus. Um, when I saw this, I went, oh my goodness, because Osimum is, Osimum is the same genus as culinary basil. So it's one of these big mint relatives, um, shell bush. Um, has wonderful minty smelling foliage. Um, it is being grown by San Marcos, but they are wholesale only. So you have to ask for it at your local nursery um, and great garden plant. The flowers most of the year, wonderful fragrant foliage. Next, please. Uh, here's that camellia. So this is where it should be uh, Nuccio's as your first source. Nuccio's is a camellia nursery in Altadena. Um, this is Camellia japonica debutante, one of the oldest and best. They're not huge flowers. They get about no more than about four inches wide, but long bloom time. Um, evergreen shrub and um, flowers winter into spring. It's an early to mid-season Camellia. Um, give it some afternoon shade in the San Fernando Valley. This is in North Hills and Alfred Hockenmeyer um, is uh, noted that his parents planted this more than 60 years ago. So you'll be able to see this plant. It won't be in flower anymore, but um, you're going to be able to see this plant pretty soon. Next slide, please. Okay, also in Alfred Garden, Euphorbia milii or crown of thorns um, with a friend. So um, Alfred has taken to feeding his pregmented and he actually got this one to eat a mealworm out of his hands. So um, one of his pets. Um, you can find this plant very easily at succulent sales and neighborhood nurseries. And there are many, many um, cultivars in different colors and sizes. And, and uh, anyway, they're a wonderful plant. Now this plant, you will be able to see it in flower because it pretty much doesn't stop flowering at the Coffee in the Garden, which is one of our outreach events. More details in a moment. Next, please. Um, also in Alfred's garden, Aloe, Aloe Wickensii, um, with the um, Afrikaans, Afrikaner name G. Lovin. Um, and uh, Alexis found something, but I couldn't find it, that that name has something to do with the petioles and the flowers and something botanical. Um, but anyway, um, um, this is a wonderful small scale aloe. Um, that flowers in, uh, in the winter time and is available through San Marcos growers. Again, you have to ask your local nursery um, or go to succulent plant sales um, and you'll find it. Next, please. All right, so this is a hybrid monkey flower, Diplicus vibrant red, growing in Alfred's garden again. And um, this one flowers March through June and sometimes again in the autumn. Um, very interesting. Uh, uh, this is a drought tolerant California native, but it's growing next to his water feature. So you can you can get away with a lot. Um, of course, all of the minulus are pollinated and visited by hummingbirds. Um, you can find this one at California Native Plant Nurseries and you can see it blooming at Coffee in the Garden. Next slide. So Coffee in the Garden is Saturday, March 4th, excuse me, Oh, please rewind your brain. It is Saturday, May 4th. And, um, whoops, 
I, 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 I'm going to comment on what Jeff Chemnick just wrote in, um, uh, is on Saturday, May 4th. Um, tickets are not available yet, but you'll want to visit this amazing little garden in um, North Hills, Alfred and Joseph's Garden, and we'll have details later, uh, members, um, details later. Save the date. Thank you very much, and we encourage you to contribute to our plant forum. When we're doing Zoom meetings, you have, um, you'll send us the information and the photos. Um, when we're doing it live at Friendship Auditorium, then you'll actually bring plants with you to the hall, which is nice. 